Hey, welcome to my shop. I thought I'd take you in and give you a look around. Come on, I'll show you. This video was made possible by NordVPN, but I'll tell you a little bit more about them later on in the video. Hey, quit listening to the ad roll and get in here. I don't have all day, come on. Well, welcome to my shop. It's a building situated on my family's four acre piece of property located in the heart of the Willamette Valley in Northwestern Oregon. It's a classic wood framed building. It measures approximately 30 feet wide by 50 feet long, putting it right at 1500 square feet. It's got concrete floors, drywalled interior, with a few modifications here and there to make it a little more user-friendly as a wood shop. It is not a far distance from my home, only 40 yard walk from my front door, so working in it is easy and convenient. And to be completely honest, I probably spend way more time in my shop than I do in my actual home. My family suffers greatly for it. In this video, I will take you around my shop, showing you every nook and cranny, as well as all the tools I use on a weekly basis. If you're interested in any of those tools, I will link everything in the video description below so you can check them out there. Well, let's get started. As you immediately enter the door from the north side, I have two bins located just inside the door, as well as my cleaning station. See, this is where I put scrap wood in the bins. And if I open this door, you can see how close my house is, just outside there, so my wife knows right where to find me. I then have a single garage door in my shop, which comes in nice and handy. Out the garage door, it looks out onto our front driveway and our small orchard. Not a bad view. Moving around the perimeter of my shop, the next thing we come to is my dust collection system. Now, I set this up originally and it was going to be a temporary fix until I could do a better job, but that was four years ago, so I think it's here for a while. I've got two pre-collection bins on either side of it, and all of my machines are plumbed to that system. It is a Grizzly 3 horsepower Polar Bear series. Then next to that, I have my only air compressor for the entire shop. I bought this probably six years ago. It's old and dirty and only about a gallon and a half or something. But since I don't use very many pneumatic tools, I really just need it to blow things off. I also have airports a few places around my shop so that I can get to them quick and easy. But mainly I just blow my beard off with them. Continuing on our journey around the perimeter, the next thing we come to is my joiner and planer station. Now, I love my planer. It is a 20 inch spiral cutter head, five horsepower grizzly planer, and it can go down to a depth of nine inches, so you can actually climb through it if you. Right next to my planer is my 3 horsepower 8 inch spiral cutter head joiner, also from Grizzly. Between these two machines, I can pretty adequately mill down any stock that I need to in my shop. Then behind those, I have a fancy screw put into the wall to hang my tracks for my track saw. Next to that, a few step ladders to make myself a little bit taller. And a crosscut sled, oh, a picture of a whale, because why not? And then I've got a few little organization systems. These mainly just catch all the random little fasteners and doohickeys I have laying around my shop and don't know where to put them. Continuing on our journey, we next come to my CNC machine. Now, to be completely honest, I have absolutely no idea how this thing works. In fact, I've never personally made it work. I've only done one project with the CNC machine, and that was the bar face for my own kitchen. And I actually had my friend Gary do all the work for that, because like I said, I do not know how to use this machine. Maybe one day. Before I got the CNC machine, I made this fancy drill holder behind it. 
But then when I put the darn CNC machine there, it made it really hard to get to the drills. But since I'm incredibly lazy, I've not taken the time to move it somewhere else, so I found a hack. I just walk over to the side and then I can reach the drills. Then in the corner right next to the CNC machine, I just shove all my random scrap pieces of ply that are too big to throw away, and who knows, I might need them someday. And then there's another door that goes out onto a covered patio. I have dreams of converting that one day into just a complete wood storage shed that I can access from inside the shop. Right next to that door, I've got my Grizzly lathe. It's an 18 by 47 inch. I got this about a year and a half ago, and I'm still working on my technique and figuring out how to use it. Above that, I've got my Jeremiah Johnson poster, which is my favorite movie. That's far enough, Pilgrim. <laughs> Such a good movie. But I'm very excited about my lathe and still very much learning how to use it. Next to the lathe, I have this chair I made, which I sit in sometimes and just randomly stare at my phone or iPad. I do a lot of procrastinating in this chair. And then on the other side of the lathe, I have a grinder set up for quick access to so I can sharpen all of my skews and random chisels that I use on the lathe. Then moving on, right next to my lathe, I have my calendar slash organization system. Basically, each job I have coming up gets a clipboard with all the pertinent information on it, and then each clipboard gets a tentative date on the calendar. As you can see by those months, I do a really great job of keeping this up to date. Right next to my calendar, I've got my gluing system. It's very high tech. I've got this big bottle and this little bottle. And when the little bottle runs out, I, I fill it with the, the big bottle. And then I've got some sanding pads and blocks that I use for my finishing on furniture. And then below all those in the cart, I have all of my random sanding discs in the various grits that I use for sanding, as well as, you know, grooming my beard. You always want to take care of yourself. That's wisdom right there. Then above that cart, I've got some cabinet clamps on the wall, a few random bottles of scotch and bourbon, and then this little case that I keep all of my hand tools in, my chisels, a few small planes, my honing, sharpening thingamajiggers. Oh, it's also my music station. Let's take just a break from the shop tour so I can tell you who made this video possible, and that is NordVPN. What the heck's NordVPN, you might ask? Well, NordVPN is a virtual private network service. So let me put this in terms that you might understand. Say you're working in your shop late one night and a ninja walks in the door. <laughs> Ninja, just walked in your shop. You're toast, man. That thing's gonna just slice your head off with one hard hiya! Hiya! But now imagine, same scenario, you've got a big old gun. That same ninja walks in, and then you're just like, oh yeah? You're gonna karate chop me? Well, I'm just gonna. <laughs> Dang, that was loud. <laughs> Boom, dead ninja. Now how does this relate to a private network service? Well, NordVPN does the exact same scenario, but online. Let's say you're in a coffee shop and there's hackers and viruses just floating around waiting to get in your computer. <laughs> Not with NordVPN. You ever travel abroad and you try and open up your computer and let's say get on Netflix or one of your other favorite entertainment sites and you can't do it because it's not your country. Well. With NordVPN, you can. 
no data logging, 24 hour customer service. It even works in China, people. And get this, this is the best part. Right now, you can get two years of NordVPN for only $89. That's like $371 a month. In fact, that's 68% off what you would normally pay. And if you thought it couldn't get any better, you can get a whole additional month for free just by using my special link that I may or may not give you. I'm just kidding, I'm gonna give it to you. It's in the video description, very top. You just click that link, boom. Nord VPN. MVP VPN. Back to the shop tour video. That was interesting. Moving on, we then come to my wood storage, clamp storage, marking gauge storage. Basically, I've got these barn doors that I installed. On the left side, I have all my measuring and marking gauges. Most of them are, well, all of them are from Woodpecker's Tools. They make very quality products. I've got my straight edges, my edge guide thingamabobs, and then on the right side, I've got all of my clamp storage. You can never have too many clamps. Well, just one more. Then behind the barn doors, I have all of my in-shop wood storage. Oh, what's that doing there? Anyways, on the, the right side back there, I can store sheet goods, and then on the left side, I have all my smaller pieces. I also was able to remove the ceiling in this portion of my shop so that I could store my wood vertically and go past my 9.5 foot ceiling limit, and I can store pieces all the way up to 16 feet if I need to. Who needs ceilings anyways? What a pointless thing, ceilings. Continuing on, we next come to what I like to call my, um, I guess my finishing station. It's this little cabinet unit that I built. It holds handy things like rubber gloves, in case you don't want to get your fingies dirty. And then in the cabinets, I got all my various finishing products. Rubio Monocoat is my go-to, which also, fun fact, is supposed to be edible. But, meh. I would not recommend it. Tastes horrible. And I also have things like foam brushes and stir sticks. And, you know, you have to have a drawer with random fasteners every now and then. And then I've got this paper towel holder I bought online. But then I ran out of the paper towels and I didn't want to buy more. So I just use the same box and shove it full of old rags. And first aid kit because safety, you know, it's important. And I also have a sink so that I can wash things off or, well, I guess, drink like a dog out of it. And that is my finishing station. Let's move on. Right next to that, I have this awesome little area of my shop. This door leads to, well, the bathroom. I won't show you any action shots in there. Don't want to give you nightmares. And then right above that, I have my custom pull-up bar. What's a custom pull-up bar, you might ask? Well, I was having trouble doing pull-ups, so I needed a little motivation. So I had this custom pull-up bar made up that holds a can of beer and a straw. That way, at the top of every pull-up, you get a little incentive treat in the form of a nice cold sip of beer. It works wonders. And then I got a dartboard for leisure time and recreation. Then right next to that I've got this router table that I actually just set up like a week ago. It's a woodpecker's router table. Super nice. Still trying to figure out what all these things are for. And then right next to my router table we come to my bandsaw, drill press, bench grinder. I also keep a large amount of scotch and bourbon on hand in my shop because I get thirsty a lot throughout the day. My bandsaw is the 14 inch deluxe series from Grizzly and next to that I have my drill press also from Grizzly. It is the heavy duty 12 speed bench top drill press. It was a little tall just sitting on the bench so I built it into my bench and brought it down a little bit. Then continuing on we come to my miter saw station. 
with a lot of interesting goodies built into it. First, I've got my mini fridge where I keep healthy choices like protein drinks, seltzers, waters, Izzy sodas, so I can make smart decisions throughout the day. Then I've got my oscillating belt sander. I didn't want to take up any space on my bench, so I just built it right in and it pulls out for convenient use. Then down below I got all my small tools like my router, my domino joiner, my other domino joiner, my Carvex, my pocket hole jig, my Dremel, my 16 gauge nailer, my 18 gauge nailer, my 16 gauge stapler, my 18 gauge stapler. I've got my TS25 sander, my TS25 sander, my other TS25 sander, and then my Rotex. Where's my Rotex? Oh yeah, I let my friend Justin borrow that. And then I've got my track saw and then another sander, but don't remember which one that is. Then we've got my miter saw. I called this a chop saw the other day, and a bunch of you trolls were like, it's not a chop saw, it's a miter saw. So my miter saw with its built-in dust collection. And then I've got this miter saw fence that I made with parts I found on woodpeckers. I just bought some extruded aluminum and these little stop clamp things, and it works awesome. I also bought the little measuring sticky tape things on their website as well. So, yeah, that's that. Then, kind of floating in the middle of my shop, I have my drum sander, which I obviously don't know why it's named a drum sander. Got that one wrong. But it's a Powermatic, one of the only Powermatic tools I have in the shop, but I love it. It's a 2244 open-ended. And then I've got my table saw, and I also have this awesome built-in outfeed table. This is the first thing I built in my shop. It's old, it's nasty, it's all dinged up, and that is just the way I like it, because I don't have to worry about taking care of it. I just cut stuff right on top of it. My table saw itself is a Grizzly 3 horsepower 10 inch table saw. I've had this since the very start of my woodworking endeavors. And what can I say? It works awesome. Then no wood shop is complete without some random pegboards with a lot of unnecessary tools like hatchets. Well, I guess this is necessary. I use my rubber mallet all the time. I love this thing and my Japanese pole saws. I use these like crazy. If you never use these, get some. I use them for like flipping burgers. I love them so much. Then at the end of my miter saw station, this is where I just pile random things like coffee mugs, this random bottle of some weird powder. Oh, I also have a knife, just in case anyone breaks in while I'm trying to build a table. You know, safety again. And that brings us back to the door which is mostly used by my five-year-old son, Ivor. He likes to come in about 25 times a day and ask if I'm done working yet and if I'm ready to come play. Most of the time I just say yes. And don't worry, I did not forget the most used surface in my entire shop are my work tables. I custom built these work tables to work just how I wanted them. I needed something mobile, that I could move around out of the way in case I needed to do bigger pieces. Each workbench has a total of 18 drawers built into it for plenty of storage for all my random things. And then the top is covered with holes so that I can, you know, include a wide array of accoutrements such as clamps and blocks for cutting things on top. And there's a quarter inch sheet underneath so none of the dust goes down into the drawers. I built two of them at the exact same height. That way I can push them together and make one mega work table, you know, to get all the big projects done. If you are interested in building similar work tables, plans are available on my website. I will include a link in the video description below, as well as a link to all the tools you've seen throughout this video. And that brings us to the end of our shop tour. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe.